Hello, Lola's. I am here, uh, guys. This is Baby Diamond. Um, Diamond been with me for a while. Um, she has, like I mentioned before, she has a um, twin cousin, Alexis, which her mommy is Lachelle Cooper. And um, Diamond been waiting on hair. I started the process. I wish that I would have sent her and let her be rooted, um, but she was an imperfect baby. Um, and I didn't want to spend the money necessarily on getting her rooted when she had what I considered to be kind of flawed a little bit, which was on her hands. Um, the fingertips, they weren't that great. I don't know. But so I, she, she probably wear a lot of hand mitts and the inside of the hands are great, but she had the most beautiful feet. It was just like. Dang, I hate it that I, you know, I messed her up. But there was, she was going to be um, one of the, she was going to be the giveaway baby at one point. But because she had the flaws, I decided to keep her. And that's something that I typically do. I will keep my flaw babies most of the time. But I'm deciding that I deserve to have one of my better babies in my personal collection. Because what does that show if every baby that I have is a flaw baby in my collection? I don't know. Anyway, so Diamond is um, a baby that I've had for a while. She got the little curvy legs, um, like Levi um, by Bonnie Brown. You know, and I think that um, Bonnie Brown is one of the sculptors that kind of set the tone for a lot of the the um, the reborn sculptors. Um, a lot of people, I think she sets. I'll, I'll say she set the trend. Um, a lot of dolls come out following kind of look like Bernie Brown's babies a little bit or have a, a touch of her style in it. I guess she kind of inspire and influence a lot of people, which is not always bad. It's not a bad thing because I think all of us have someone that inspire, inspire us and in, um, our inspiration to us by one way or the other. Um, so I think that that's not a not a bad thing um but I absolutely adore her I just hadn't really showed her much because I kept one minute I'll take her head off to finish and next minute so I just put it back on because I'm like it's gonna be a while it's gonna be a while before I can actually get her together and you know sit and really try to start rooting on her hair um you guys know the next five weeks of my life is gonna be like fast track um right now I have um this is the weekend of Gabby's getting ready to go to school for the first time. And I'm actually putting her in a totally different school. So, and it's a really totally different environment for her. Um, so, you know, I try to limit her, um, how should I say it? Life changes as much as possible to make sure that she have as much stability as possible. Um, because I don't want her, um, she's already, you know, had kind of like a rocky start, you know, and so I want to stabilize her life as much as possible. However, at the same time, just like with the rest of my kids, I don't want to stabilize it too much that she thinks that's the norm for life because life is never that stable. Um, it's always up and down. Like right now I'm at the height of my happiness. Um, I found a career that I feel um, so liberated and um, I don't know I'm just so excited about the background of the company that I work for and just my um, my position is one that I truly admire I it's been kind of hard um, in my career to find something that have that happy medium where it's you know laid back something I love but then still pay decent enough for me to be able to survive off of I mean we're always going to need more we're always going to feel like we should be paid more etc etc but I think I'm at a point where I found that happy medium on top of I've had a lot of struggles um with you know trying to find that balance you know after being divorced and it was a very um very very hard 
divorce um and so you know and that's been way years ago so that's you know but it was you know letting go of the baggage moving on you know blah 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 and so getting to a point I've had a lot of and now it's like okay my career is starting to stabilize um, I just you know recently accepted an offer etc etc um, I you know been engaged for a couple of years you know and now we set a date I'm like five weeks in before I actually you know really say I do um, which is kind of almost nerve-wracking for me it's like you ever felt like things when things get to be going good because you've had such a rough time it feels like it almost like it's not gonna happen and you know I'm trying not to like feel that way I want to embrace it and, and just let down my guard and enjoy this moment as I work my way up that that slope you know but you know I'm kind of still a little bit guarded and um, so I have that going on then Gabby's starting school for the first time and I'm having that motherly panic feeling like you know is she gonna be able to adjust and you know how she's gonna do in this environment and you know etc etc so I'm hoping that I don't break down and cry the first day I know I probably will I'll try to hold it together for her um it's a big leap for her because she's going to big school she's gonna be a kindergartner and um you know so that that's that's that and then with the doll world you know a lot has transpired over the last few months um i've changed my perspective once again of the community and how i feel that i should um you know interact or what role i want to play within this community um moving forward so i'm just trying to keep a happy balance because it's a hobby but at the same time over time i've made myself pretty much almost you know like a social a public figure you know in in within the hobby um i don't think i'm not arrogant enough to think that i'm some big time a big shot or whatever but i will you know say in the most humblest way that i do know that um i am known by quite a bit of people artists sculptors collectors and you know what i do is very under the microscope type thing so and i've went through you know like i said a lot of different changes and phases and there's a lot of uh, maturity and growth that has to take place as you start out as a youtuber and you know you're you're like i said you're you're here and you're exposed and you're vulnerable to critique and opinions and um attacks and threats and stalkers and you know great people and new friendships all over the world and etc so, you know it's, it's a, you got to take the the bad with the good type thing so um so here we go with another phase um i've started painting that's something i didn't used to do um i felt like you know i did at one point feel like starting to paint would affect the way that i interact on my channel because i used to always like you know do my you know my opinions of the dolls and stuff like that and you know i was one time labeled the doll critic and now i'm painting it's like now i'm the doll critic of my own work so no one has to tear me down because i'm already i tear my down, myself down enough but i'm kind of over that and now i'm embracing the good the positives and i know that i'm learning and growing with my art but um i'm really so i'm really excited i'm i'm excited about the things to come um so those that follow me on this journey it's gonna be another roller coaster guys i hope you're here for it um like i said you know the way that i interact may change a little bit but it's you know it's it's gonna be all good i love the way 
she falls um and i'm also you know like i said painting and stuff has really drawn me back into the love of my reborns too not only that i'll be honest with you guys sometimes i think we kind of gravitate back to our reborns when we decide that we can't um keep affording the silicones of course the reborns are much more affordable um i will be taking a pause i keep saying that but i just bought another baby on collecting as much um just for a little bit i gotta you know adjust and um I think well I think I slowed down I've slowed down a lot and I think I'm gonna slow down even more so now because I don't know but for whatever reason maybe it's because I just can't afford it like I used to and now I'm looking at it from a broke man's perspective <laughs> no, I don't know it's like now I just don't feel like I want to invest as much into um, the hobby as I used to um, and then I'll be very honest to say maybe I've been thinking about this I wonder if it's the um, that I filled my life with this hobby like I filled I was trying to fill a void or it filled up a lot of space a distraction of the fact of you know something that I felt incomplete about or missing and I hate to associate the hobby with some type of you know issue because we, we we hate for people to say oh they collect because they're crazy or they collect because they're depressed or they collect because they can't have children etc etc and so I hate to really associate it with this and other but I do find that I guess it's kind of like what Pooh Bear was saying in her video and it kind of makes sense one of her videos she said something that really resonated with me she said it was at one point she really needed she felt like she needed the hobby and now that she's more content and happy with her life she don't need it it's more like a want it's more like a accessory type thing and those may not be her exact words but that's that's what I took from it and that's kind of how it is for me now as well as like when I was not working I was kind of like felt like I was walking on eggshells because I knew if I went too far in my opinions or said too much I felt like my my work would be attacked I would be attacked I may not sell as well if I was like genuinely 100% as raw and uncut with my opinions or thought process and so I was I felt like I was very it was a conflict of interest um, so to speak and so now I that I don't it's not that I don't need you guys or need your money or need to sell um, because trust me sometime there is a need there um, but I don't have as much pressure on me now that I've went back to work to try to sell a doll here and there or sell so many dolls a month and so now it's kind of like take you know you know if people buy from me a lot of times it's people that are actually fond of me and I want to say that they do you know like my my work and the level that I'm on you know so far within my skill set of this um because there's levels to this stuff um but you know I know for a lot of people that collect from me there is a big part of it that has to do with just because they are huge supporters of me and my channel and my content and just who I represent and who what I stand for and I really thoroughly with all my heart appreciate that and I feel like now I'm at this point where that's probably going to be the, the the customers that I have or the clientele that I have other than you know people that randomly come across my babies on eBay and buy from me um because I'm I'm no longer being so censored um and it's nothing like collecting from someone that you admire what they represent in the community and um, how you admire their, like maybe it's their sculpting style or their painting style or, you know, sometimes it's strictly on pure raw emotions. Like, wow, you know, I've watched this person come from here or 
I think this person has great potential. They're going to be here. So I want to get a baby early on before they blow up and I can't afford it all. And I can say, oh, I have a baby from this person in my collection. I have those type babies in my collect collection. And I know that there's other people that collect that way as well. Um, it's a different feeling versus I also have babies in my collection that I've lost respect for the artists or I don't like what they are representing in the community anymore and you know I try not to in my younger days of the hobby it really transferred over to the doll and I just really didn't want it in my collection period but now I'm trying to I've matured enough to where I have to kind of disconnect and if I really like the doll or like the, the artwork, I will, or it represent a little bit more than that for me, I will hold on to it. Um, some A lot of times those babies are more private babies or whatever. Um, but, and don't go to speculating um, because some of them you've never even seen. So, um, but it's not, a, you know, it's, it's not as good of a feeling as if when you actually have a lot of respect or admiration for the person that made created the doll um because these are very emotional purchases anyway guys i'm not gonna talk that much anymore but i'm gonna show you guys her little feet up close these are her little feet you see you see that she has i love her little feet like she had the best feet i was like oh and i love her little face she's just a cutie pie um Hang on. She's a cutie pie. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I wish I would have let Mary root her too. And she she rooted her sister and I was like, dang, I wish I would have. But I don't think that she could root over her. Like if I could just match all this hair out and she root over her, I don't know how that would work. It may be harder for her to do, so I don't know. But anyway, guys, we will... I will talk to you guys later, and um, I, and uh, me and Miss Diamond will see you guys later. Where's her bracelet? I just realized her bracelet is gone. She's normally one of my babies that have on a bracelet too. I have my little divas in the nursery. Anyway, 